Hello everyone, my name is Malmaster and welcome to a not quick start guide to Batania. So if you may have seen my quick start guide to Batania, it's pretty short and sweet. Uh, kind of ran through everything you need to get started, kind of like if you get your new PlayStation and it has that quick start guide that says this is how you plug in play type deal. That's basically what that was. Uh, this is going to be more like the actual manual to your PlayStation where you know there's okay you can change all these settings you can you can connect to the internet like this you can do XYZ you know the whole list of things the terms and conditions all in there that's what this is gonna be so this is be a much longer um, tutorial guide if you will for Batania um, little disclaimer here I'm open to suggestions uh, this is how I start out with Batania there's tons of different ways to do this but this is just how I do it so that's my disclaimer is I'm open to suggestions, um, helpful comments are welcomed. If you're here to say, you didn't do it right, so-and-so does it this way, don't put those comments here. So now the disclaimer's out of the way, let's actually get started here. Um, so, yes, I'm in creative mode. Uh, so this is my 2015 mod pack, which is why you see all this other stuff that I'll do tutorials over later. Um, but but hand is pretty easy, pretty new. Um, mystical white flowers. Lots of mystical white flowers. So you got mystical white flowers, you got mystical purple flowers, light blue flowers, gray, light gray, all colors of the spectrum, color scheme, whatever. Um, so they spawn all over the world. You can actually, I think, turn the spawning of them up or down, depending on what you'd prefer. They're actually down of, from what they used to be. But, so, step one, make a Lexica Batania. Pretty simple recipe, a tree, sapling, and a book. Uh, this is your guide to all things Batania. I won't tell you everything that's in Batania in these tutorials. I'll kind of give you references, you know, what to do, what I do. Um, but there's all sorts of different things you can do um, with this guide. There's all the different flowers that generate mana. Um, there's all the different functional flora, um, things that, you know, make things grow faster, hurt things, uh, blood magic related, make clay out of sand. Um, regen 3, Hopper Hawk is like a hopper, it picks items off the ground, you know, that sort of thing. So there's very useful items in Batania. Uh, there's baubles and accessories, tons of baubles, tons of baubles. most popular one is the Sandra Sash, makes you move a little bit quicker. Uh, mystical items, um, Man of Steel tools, Pasture Seeds, which are really cool. Um... I didn't know that. Cool. Um, that can only be found in dungeons, apparently. Um, at least that's where I found my first one. So now that I know what that does, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, all different things in the book uh, might be worth a good read, um, even though you're getting a full-length tutorial here. So like I said in the quick start guide, step one, or step two, I guess, make yourself a petal apothecary with a I like there. Um, with a mana petal, some slabs, and some cobblestone. Um, you can fill it with Thalmcraft if you've done Thalmcraft first. This is actually kind of high tier Thalm, well, mid tier Thalmcraft. Um, you're probably going to fill it up with a bucket, most likely. You can you can automate it with autonomous activators and buckets. I think Steve's Factor Manager can fill them up, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't actually tested it thoroughly. Uh, I don't know if pipes can either, but I do know that this does, buckets do pretty easy to work with especially if you're in your infinite source pool not a problem so you want to make one of those guys and then you want to go find yourself some flowers um, flowers depending on your world gen maybe you know sparse maybe um, tons of flowers all over the place you want you want to start out with quite a you know a few white flowers I would recommend four white flowers probably is all you'll ever need to start off with. Uh, as far as orange, yellow, uh, orange, yellow, light blue flowers, uh, black flowers, you'll need a, quite a few of them to get started, but once you've gotten started, the more f flowers you have, the better when you start out. Just depends on how, how much you want to wait around for your mana to produce. Um, so the more flowers you get, the better. Uh, like I said in this quick, quick start guide, uh, flowers will create two petals, mystical petals, uh, you'll get two of them per flower. So that's nice to know because these do also work with dyes. If you make, I believe it's mortar, mortar and pestle. Yeah, mortar and pestle. Real easy recipe. Um, like, easy peasy. Uh, and this will actually craft them into dyes. 
so you can actually make white dye. Uh, and this or dictionaries. So for Thalmcraft, if you need lots of black dye, which is ink sac, you can just use the black flowers as black dye, and it works. So that's really helpful, uh, the dyes from the flowers. So like I said, you want to gather a bunch of flowers. What's helpful is when we get to living wood, you can actually make what's called a pasture seed, which is grass and a mana pool makes a pasture seed. Um, and this combination with the living wood, which is crafted over there with the uh, pure daisies, makes a horn of the wild. And a very easy, easy wool in, in one of these makes a flower pouch. Good combination early game, because now you can break lots of flowers all at once, as so. And with the flower pouch, you should be able to collect a bunch of them in your flower pouch which as you can see, you can actually collect up quite a few of the different ones. And so they'll actually go in the flower pouch instead of going into inventory. Occasionally it may not work. I think I'm in creative mode, which is why, but for the most part, they all jump in here. You can store a stack of each type of flower in the flower bag. So keep that in mind as you're adventuring looking for flowers. All right, so even though we jumped over to that whole business there, you wanna take your white flowers and make pure daisies. Uh, pure daisies are like so. Let's actually do one of these deals. Um, and pure daisy, every time you make flowers, you need a seed. Every, every time you make a flower, if you're going to make an agricarnation, a jaded amaranthus, what have you, you need a, you need seeds in a petal apothecary. So what you do is with your pure daisy, you throw in four of these petals, which I'm in creative mode, so I actually have to grab four of these. And then you top it off with a seed. So you got four in there, a seed. Aha, pure daisy. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, per se, you get a blue flower in here for some reason. So you have your white flower, you have a blue flower. Oh no, it's in there. Shift, right click, comes back out. The last one you put in will come out. So that's how that works. That's pretty nice. Now, you'll need quite a bit of the living wood, living rock. Turtle, what in the world are you doing, magic? Apparently he does not know. Um, you need, you need quite a bit of this, you know, living wood, or wood to living wood, um, stone to living stone. Um, apparently magic was not doing it correctly. Oh, that's okay, though. Um, but anyways, magic, here's my turtle, which I actually have an automated program for this. Apparently it's not working out correctly, but I bet the sleep cycle's off. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, but in computer craft, we have a turtle that can basically do this for us. Is my sleep cycle off? No, it's on sleep 120. Sleep 120. Huh. I, oh, I know why it wasn't working. Dur -dur -dur. <laughs> yeah, gotta have a pure daisy. So to automate this, this program can be found on my website, mymasterlp.com. The paste bin tab. It's a really ugly website. Don't worry about that. Uh, you care about the program here. It's the living, living stone, living wood program that you're looking for. There's a paste bin. Um, there's also a photo of how this works, but I'll show you here. Yeah, so I have magic. Okay, good. So some sort of fuel goes in the bottom barrel, stone or wood, either one of these will work, in a chest. You put your turtle down, you program him up, name him. Magic happens to be a Patreon, so thank you, Magic. Um, so as a Patreon, you get perks like being called turtles. And then basically just activate the program, making sure your pure daisy is there. And if you activate it, he will pull out some fuel. He'll basically go around in a circle here. And after a period of time, you can tell there's little sparklies. That's how you know it's working. After a period of time, he'll dig up the created living rock. And then he'll alternate to the other barrel, which is wood. Now, you could do both stone, um, which is fine. But to do one turtle to do two different functions, you know, for both stone and wood pretty good deal actually so that's what i'm that's what i personally use to automate this you can use steve's factory manager for this um you can probably use quite a other few other things but i just use turtles because they're easy so it's time to do this all right so that's kind of living rock living stone uh pure daisies so similar to pure daisies you want to make your day blooms uh, so your yellow flower petals, your blue, your light blue flower petals, and your orange and a seed will make a, a day bloom. And if you put day blooms too close, they actually share mana between them. The Lexica botania actually warns you against this, in fact. So if we go generating flora, 
it'll actually tell you bad, good. So yeah, don't do that. That's not good. But if they're spread out like they are over there, then it's good. Nightshade only works at night. Daybloom only works at day. So that's why you have both of them early game. That way you're constantly producing mana. Nightshade, as of this release, I believe does not produce as much as a Daybloom. But in the future releases, I think it's slated that it will produce as much as, as a Daybloom at night. Just to make it fair. So that's your Nightshade black, purple, and gray with a seed. Makes a Nightshade. So in the daytime, in the nighttime, in the daytime, in the nighttime. All right, simple enough. So, I have this huge array here. You can do one nightshade and one day bloom and get away with it. It's gonna take a couple Minecraft days and nights to do that um, until you have enough mana to get some of your endo flames, which is what I prefer. Or you can just do this massive array here, and my phone will go off. Um, you can just do this massive array here, and this will produce lots and lots of mana fairly quickly, which is nice. Um, but anyways, to get this mana, elsewhere other than in the flower because right now if we take our wand here you can actually look at the flower and it tells you it's full of mana by the yellow bar or by the purple bar so we need to make a spreader the spreader is living wood gold and a petal and these are just your basic mana spreaders um, if you put it here you'll actually notice it's filling up if you look here this flower is connected to that so you can see how it kind of highlights it when i hover over it so that's kind of an interesting little mechanic bosky added uh, with the wands. So you can see which flowers go in where. Just in case you say have another mana spreader here, you know, go in some other direction, and you say, okay, this flower, I don't want it there anymore, you can actually bind it to this other spreader. And now if you hover over it, you can see that this one has highlighted, and so it's it's a different spreader now. So on, on my right side, it's actually highlighted instead of being on the left. Cool. So you can actually tell it to bind to different spreaders which is kind of a nifty nifty little trick later on when you get to some of your more higher tier mana generation i guess so i did rush forward a little bit uh the wand here you got some living wood make some twigs three twigs and any com combination of petals will make a wand obviously white and yellow will make white and yellow one not a black and black one but that's creative mode for you so that the wand is nice there's a bind mode and a function mode function mode you can see in your inventory it doesn't have anything on it, it just looks like a real wand bind mode actually has a little green leaf on it i guess and you can kind of see it when i click here you can kind of see the little green mark on it versus the no green mark so uh bind mode is in green bind mode is binding things to other things so you know this to that which works because then now this is filling up. Why you don't want to do that? I don't actually know, but you can. So that's bind mode versus function mode. Function mode, you can actually um, shift click and actually point this different directions. I find this a little bit harder to use personally, um, which is why I just prefer the bind mode because that's much easier point and point and click type of deal, or click and point rather. I guess is how that works. Now, you'll want to make yourself a mana pool. First, you'll start off with the living stone to make a diluted pool. Diluted pools hold about one-tenth of the mana a mana pool can hold, and it doesn't do all the functions that a mana pool does. So, your goal early game is to make your, your pool here. You can see there's actually a tooltip that says you cannot make a mana pool because there's not enough mana. We'll bind this to there, and as it fills up here, you'll notice that, hey, that check mark now appears. We can actually make a regular mana pool. Um, it's recommended you kind of don't generate more mana than you need to because now this pool is full of mana and you can't do anything with it. So you kind of have to just break it and place the real mana pool. And this is where you'll be creating all of your goody goody stuff later. Um, this will continue to fill. You want to get this pool up enough that you can actually start making some of your mystical uh, petals into mana petals uh, for some of your more higher tier things. All right, so mana pool's out of the way there. Uh, that's how you make it. Just throw it in the mana pool. Good to go. Regular petals, mystical petals. If you throw them in a mana pool, which has that check mark, and if we come over here, we have an X. So this pool does not have enough mana to make that. And you can see by clicking on the mana pool, or like any other thing, you know, you can click to see how much mana. This is right clicking, by the way. 
you can click not enough mana to make a petal now we're using the guilty creative pool right now which has everlasting guilty pool yeah it's a lot of fun Blunk. white mana petal cool any mana petal will work like this you know your red ones your brown ones your light gray ones whatever they'll all work um, so that's really nice to do so yeah but you do got to get a little bit more mana before you do that I would highly recommend endo flames personally just because charcoal is fairly easy to get a hold of uh, endo flames will burn anything that will burn in a furnace except for lava buckets will not accept lava buckets but anything else will work so well other than you know these have 300 burn time but it doesn't burn mana spreaders because it's from Britannia so it's blacklisted but I think you get the picture so if I were to say throw it on a crafting bench for example you actually suck it up maybe or not okay maybe not let's grab a chest then I know chests work you don't like crafting benches? How about, how about this? You'll, you'll take one of these, right? Hello? Or not. Be that way, you little jerk. Alright. Try this again. Eat the chest! This worked for me earlier, I swear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. You don't like chests, apparently. You you worked last time. Eat this. It could be that it's on a timeout right now because I may have fed these guys quite a bit earlier. Let's go over here and test this. It works, I swear. There we go. So a little sparkly effect. It ate the coal. Coal, charcoal, wood, trees, or wood planks what have you anything will burn in their sticks it just you got to feed it and the stuff and you have to do it manually or you can do it with turtles like you can over here so another turtle program here ron another patreon um, i have a a program called whoops not edit a program called mana basically the turtle sucks the fuel source uh, drops it in front of it and then turns right uh, four times sleeps for 300 seconds which Depends on what fuel type you put in. I'm using coal blocks. Might not be correct. Uh, charcoal usually goes for uh, 60, to, 60 to 90 seconds. Blaze rods usually go for 90 to 120 seconds. Uh, sleep timer wise. So depending on what fuel you use, you might need to adjust the sleep timer on that. Uh, but this guy, yeah, he'll spin around in circles. Uh, let's exit here. So he'll spin around in circles, dropping mana. And uh, they'll get sucked up. Oh god, Ron, stop, 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 stop. I thought I put you on a sleep timer. Apparently not. All right, well, I need to fix that real quick. I literally wrote that up in like two minutes. So you'll notice it is spreading mana because it's getting quite a bit of mana. And actually, these go really quick. You know, it fills up quick with mana. Now, you'll notice with my wand here, you see the beam, and then you see this point here. This is the point at which you start losing mana in the burst. The end point, if you will. Now, it doesn't mean no mana will come out of this point. It just means that it's significantly reduced after this point. So, we have a mana void for demonstration purposes, but say you have a mana pool, and your mana pool is right here. It will go into the mana pool, as you can see, but your end point is right here, so you're losing mana. What you want to do is you want to you know, either place this at the end point or ahead of it, or you want to you know, move your spreader closer. You want to get it you know, within that so the end point hits your pool before it hits the end point, essentially. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, Mechanic-wise, what else is there to show off while I have your attention here? That's really about it for part one. Um, like I said, there is endo flames. I prefer endo flames because they burn charcoal. You make a tree farm, you have charcoal for days, fuel for days, botanium mana for days. Good to go. You don't have to use endo flames. Uh, hydrangeas are another good source. It literally takes water, water, water. Excuse me. Literally takes water. So you make an infinite source water pool. You got mana for days. Once again, though, these won't produce nearly as much as the endo flames because water is infinite. Charcoal, not so much. So you can do that. Um, if you want to get a little crazy, you can do the TNO. Oh, we won't get into that next. That's runes. Oh gosh. 
Uh, a lot of these new other ones are runes. Runes are the next stage in the whole flower process. So probably stick with your hydrangeas, your your endo flames for now until next time. So, uh oh, it's not good. It's scary. So, I believe that will be all for today's long episode. I want to thank you all for those who stayed through this entire long episode. Thank you for watching. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the in-depth guide to Botania. I'll be doing a lot more of these later on. Uh, part two will be runes, runic altar, automation of runic altar. I know, fun stuff. Um, with turtles, of course. I haven't, I've done it with AE, but I haven't actually done it on my server yet with AE. Or not my server, Jake's server. Anywho, so there's automation for runic altar as well. I prefer turtles, but you can use AE as well. And promise to use Factor Manager. Who knows? So Runic Altar will be next time. Uh, flowers that require runes will be next time. How to make those flowers as well. And possibly we'll get into Mana Steel um, and Terra Steel next time as well. So, like I said, thank you for watching. We will see you all next time. Have a good day. Have a good Blood Moon night. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.